This row R3 triple channel dash camera offers all the modern features and a compact, well thought out design. But is this the perfect camera for you? Let's find out. Looking at the box, we can see all the features that this camera offers and there is a lot to talk about here. I've reviewed many cameras in the past and there are always compromises, but so far I'm struggling to find any here. We get a 3 channel camera that can record 1440p from the front camera and 1080p from the other two cameras. We will check out the footage later in the video. We also get a very nice responsive 3 inch IPS display which makes it easy to set up and pull up videos in an emergency. It has built in GPS, dual band Wi-Fi and a G sensor. It also features WDR and 1.4 aperture for the front camera for better contrast and clarity as well as infrared built in LEDs for night cabin footage. This camera system offers a ton more and I won't be able to get to all of these features in this video, but it can also support up to 512 gigabytes micro SD cards, has built in image stabilization, as well as distortion correction and modern video compression. You won't see this on many other dash cameras at this price point. Anyway, in the box, we find the user manual, a card warning us to use high quality storage, a quick start guide, and of course, a box with all the goodies. Inside the box, we have some cleaning wipes, a trim removal tool, extra adhesive strips and cable management clips, electrostatic film for both front and rear cameras, two different length USB cables, one two and a half feet for data transfer or power if your car has a close enough source, and the second one is 12 feet, which is what most people will be using when installing these cameras. And of course the rear camera cable, which is six meters or almost 20 feet long. In the other box, we also have the rear camera, 4.8 amp dual USB charger and a suction cup mount. Looking at the camera itself, it's very sleek, especially for having two built-in cameras and a display. Both cameras are adjustable so you can get the perfect angle when installing it in the car. And since it's a touchscreen, we just get a couple of ports on this camera. One is for the rear camera as well as power, and the power button that also acts as the emergency button, and of course the micro SD card slot as well. Further down we also have another dedicated power port. On the other side of the camera we have a microphone and well, that's about it. Overall, a very thought out and well designed camera that will look decent in any vehicle. One of the best things about this camera is its design. So not only does it have a built in stand right here, I assume that's where the GPS is as well. So you can just peel off the sticker, stick it to the windshield and basically be done with it. But we can also use one of these suction cups that just goes in right here. So that makes it easier for a non-permanent installation. So for example, I'm just gonna install it, well, let's say right here, lock it in place, and it's super solidly attached to the windshield, which is awesome. Another very important thing here is that you get a good quality micro SD card. Don't get those super cheap ones. Make sure it's a high quality one. It has to be class 10 and A2 V30. So let's get that installed. There it is. Tighten that down so it's very easily adjustable basically in any direction. We're going to remove that. And there you go. And of course we can adjust the camera just like that. So this is going to be our front facing camera. This is going to be our interior camera just right there. And you can see that right there. Hi. See? And of course we have the back as well. So we got all three cameras going. Now looking at the main screen, we can see that it gives us a lot of information other than the date and the time and of course the resolution. We can also see that we are recording. So it's telling you when it is or it is not recording. We also have our GPS signal. We have the looping. So it loops every three minutes and then starts a new file. We have WDR, which is wide dynamic range. We have uh, exposure auto, G sensor at level five. We have auto flash. Uh, no parking mode. I have not hardwired this into the car yet. I might do that in the future. Micro SD card and Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is going to be used to uh, connect to the app on your phone. And of course, we can see that the audio is also being recorded. All right, so that's all of the information. And then if we tap, we actually have a, a bunch more items. We can switch the camera so we can flip the camera backwards. We can stop the recording, go back home. We can mute it so it's not recording. 
Yep, so it's not recording the audio. We can go to the folder and then see what was previously recorded. So we have all of the files that were recorded previously. We have front, cabin, and rear. There it is. So that's just me moving the camera around. Plays back very quickly. We have events. So if something does happen, if there is a bump or, or an accident, uh, depending on your G sensor settings, we also get those saved and never erased until you erase them manually. So yeah, very cool. And of course, let's check out the settings as well. Yeah, it announces a lot of things that you do to make it a little bit easier. Here we have the video resolution, so you can change it based on how many cameras you have connected. So if you disconnect the rear, you can just switch to front and cabin, and then you can change the resolution to 4K and 1080p. Or if you use all three, the max that you can do is 1440p and two 1080p's. So the interior and the rear is going to be 1080p, but the front is going to be 1440p. And all of those are at 30 frames per second. We also have loop recording, so I wanted to switch that to one minute. So our clips are one minute long instead of three minutes. IR LEDs, so these are little LEDs here in the front that will record the interior using those IRs. That way uh, you can actually see what's happening inside the car since usually it would be very dark. So I'm going to keep leave that uh, on G sensor usually I like to lower the setting so if I go like this on the glass I don't want it to be uh, sensing that uh, while we are driving things like that audio recording so we can turn that on make sure that's recorded as far as the exposure it's probably a good idea to add just a little bit of exposure to the rear camera since there is tint on that glass we also have WDR, definitely want to keep that on. Video compression, so you can change that depending on what you want to do with the video and how easily you want to transcode it. Anyway, there's a few other cool items in here. So you can rotate the display, which is great to see. You can rotate the rear camera or the front. So if you install it upside down, this will help you with getting the footage in the right direction. And of course, we have system settings as well. So we have Wi-Fi, we can set the Wi-Fi to whatever we want when we connect it to the phone which i will do later and of course we can format the micro sd card ch change the time zones date date format time time format so you can have a screensaver at the moment i just have it come on after a minute and it just shows the speed and time uh, and, and if it's recording or not screen brightness of this actual screen i'll probably lower it when i'm not uh when i'm not filming that way uh, it's not just bright in the vehicle when you are driving and of course we can adjust the speaker volume I'll probably set that to low so it's when it's telling you that it's recording it's not too loud touch tone that's just the information that's just the beeping you hear when we are moving around and a few other items that are pretty useful if they are what you need but otherwise that's basically it for the settings everything else well it just works as soon as you plug in it starts recording and it works well one thing i forgot to mention is that there's a little information button right here so if you're not sure what video resolution is for example you can just tap that and it tells you what you are actually changing and you can do that basically on, on any item so just right here and explains the difference between 2.4 and 5 gigahertz so very very useful and very intuitive definitely easy to use even if you never used one of these before we'll check out the app in just a minute but first i wanted to finally take a look at the footage to see if all of these features actually actually equal to high quality videos and wow the quality of the video during the day and good weather is outstanding the sky is not washed out or blown out the exposure is well adjusted automatically based on the light conditions and everything is crisp during the night it's a little harder to capture all of the details but this must be the best night footage i've had in a while even though it's not 4K, they use a 5 megapixel OmniVision CMOS sensor. It's very smooth and dynamic, so details are not lost even with just your car's lights. Cabin camera does a great job as well, but clearly the resolution is lower. But you can easily make out details inside the car. At night, the infrared LEDs make a huge difference and allow us to actually see what is happening with good detail. Perfect for those driving passengers. Switching over to the rear camera, once again, I'm pretty impressed with the footage we get here. The video is crisp, clear, and shows plenty of details such as license plates and street signs. The 140 degree angle captures a wide area and together with the two other cameras, you practically have a 360 view in case of an accident. During the night, it's much harder to capture a good image as there are no headlights to help here and 
this vehicle has a pretty dark tint on the rear glass as well. Even so, I would say it looks better than 95% of cameras I have tested at night. You can still make out the sky in the middle of the night and still see details other cameras would miss. Overall, I'm very impressed with the quality videos this camera captures and will be keeping this one as a permanent installation in my car for now. Lastly, I wanted to talk about the app. In most cases, it's barely worth mentioning one, but here the app is fantastic. It was simple to use and connected to the camera every time without any issues. I also use this app for the Rove R2 4K Pro camera. So in my case, I had to switch the selected device to Rove R3 in the app, connect to the camera's Wi-Fi, and go back to the app. If your live view doesn't load right away, turn off the cell network. Then you are presented with the live view from the front camera. Here you can easily switch between the front, cabin or rear cameras which is great for adjusting them. You can also go full screen to get better details. You can of course also download the videos for each camera directly to your phone. This works really well and is faster than any other camera I've tested before. It only takes 22 seconds to download a 3 minute video from the front camera and less than five seconds for the cabin and rear cameras, all thanks to the dual band five gigahertz Wi-Fi. You can also see your locked files here. And finally, you can adjust all of the settings we saw earlier on the camera here on the phone. The cool thing is that these changes are happening live on the camera screen as well. So there is no confusion. Overall, this app is very well polished and I would consider it a huge positive for the experience of using row r3 dash camera system i also like that their support is local to me here in chicago so if you have any issues it's easy to reach someone and get stuff done under the one year warranty so is this the perfect camera for you well you be the judge but after spending some time using this dash camera it's as close to perfect as i've seen thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye